Welcome back to C++ with Miyoshi. We're talking about arrays a little bit more here today. Um, just want to let you remember, or help you out a little bit more, a little bit more detail. Uh, here we have a, an integer array called scores. And remember, arrays are just a collection of data that's got the same name. These have different memory spaces and we use those, we address each of those guys by what's called an index. The index is this guy here, I call them subscripts sometimes, so I have score sub zero. If you hear me say sub zero, that just means that that's the index of zero. And uh, one thing about character arrays or integer arrays or float arrays or whatever kind of arrays we've got, they all start with an index of zero. So, um, or you have, hear the term called zero indexing. That means they start out numbering with zero. So oftentimes you'll hear um, computer scientists, computer programmers, those kind of folks, who will start counting with zero. And it makes sense in the way we address um, our arrays and so forth. So I have score sub zero. I have to address it individually uh, as assigned the value 100. And I have uh, score sub one is 97. And score sub two is assigned the value 90 and so forth and so on. I have to address each one of them individually. Now, if you just want to um, uh, initialize them when you declare them, for instance, maybe I have this int array one is a uh, sub five, so I have five um, parts of my array, then I can do, I can just do an assign the value, and I have an open curly brace, and then I just assign the values what I need. So in this case, I have one goes into array one sub zero, two goes into array one sub one, and so on until I get to um, index number four. So array one sub four would be a five. Now this is fine and dandy for things where I have not very many values, but what if I have larger ones? Well, you can uh, address each of them with things called loops, like we've seen before. So I have, over here I have a float array called float array two. That's not a superscript, that's just a two in there. Uh, float array two is, I've got a hundred values there. Well, I don't want to do it this way where I assign the value and have, have to write out a hundred, especially if I have something simple like I want to um, have them start out with one and then increase by 1.5 each time or something like that, which is what I'm doing down here. Then I can do something with a little loop. So I have here a loop, a for loop. I'm going to start my index at uh, a zero and then I'm going to go to uh, less than 100. Now, something for you folks who haven't maybe programmed for a long time is that with a for loop, if I um, am addressing arrays all the time, or in this case, I always can put um, I start, start my index at zero, and then I'm gonna go to be less than 100. So this guy is 100, and that's 100. That's a nice way to see that if I'm going from zero to less than the size of my array, uh, that's an easy way to check that. It's gonna index all of them, and not go overboard, not gonna go beyond the index. Um, and then I'm gonna do I plus plus. Then all I'm gonna do is address each one of them, so array sub two, array two, sub i, or of an index of i, is going to be assigned the value a. Here I have a is set to value 1, and then I'm just going to increase a by 1.5 each time. So then I'll have 1 in there to begin with, and then 2.5, then 4, and so forth and so on, until I get all my, um, all my values initialized. Okay? Here's one that uh, is very simple. If I want to have an array an integer array with, um, of 100 with all the values 1 through 100. Then all I have to do is do the same kind of thing. I'll have 4 int i is 0, i less than 100, and i plus plus. Then I'm going to have array sub, the array 3 sub i. I'm just going to assign the value uh, i plus 1. We know that i is going from 0, it starts at 0, so that means that the 0th element of my array is going to be 1. And my first element of the array are, is going to be 2, and so forth, and so on. So whatever this guy is, uh, the, the value is going to be one more than that. Now, of course, uh, I would be remiss if I didn't remind you that I have to address each one of them even when printing. Uh, there is no printf for an array besides a character array. And, uh, but what I'm going to address each one of them, I want to do four. Again, i is 0, i less 100, i plus plus, if I've got a, so whatever size it's going to be. If I want to address each one of them and output them to the, to the screen, I can just do printf, percentf, backslash t. In this case, I'm just separating them by tabs. 
and then address each one of them individually as I print them out. So, uh, array, nice way to uh, initialize them. Remember that you have to, in it, uh, remember that you have to address each one of them individually. Um, you can initialize them and declare them at the same time if you use these curly braces and separate the values by commas. Uh, and then, of course, the easier way to initialize if you've got a large one is just use a big for loop, um, whatever the case may be. So, arrays, very simple one-dimensional arrays we have here, um, in, integers and floats, and you can use whatever types of data that you've got, um, but a little bit more on arrays. So, uh, thanks for tuning in. Tune in next time when we'll talk about um, two-dimensional arrays and a couple more interesting things with arrays. So thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next time on C++ with Miyoshi.